It's me. Hi. I'm the problem, it's me. But no, seriously, that is the topic of today's video. Welcome guys to my channel, or welcome back if you've been here for a while. Happy freaking New Year's. It is 2024. I have marked myself safe from the Stanley Cup epidemic of 2023. Honestly surprises me because that's exactly the kind of thing I feel like I would have had. But besides the point, we are now in 2024 and as I do every single year, I reflect on like the previous year and I reflect on, you know, the growth, the changes I've made in the previous year. And despite it being a pretty rough year, as my bank account would suggest, I think I had a lot of growth in the last year or so. And uh, for 2024, my goal, and something that I implore other people to perhaps make their own personal goal, is to be a little bit more accountable this coming year. What do I mean by accountable? Well, for as long as I can remember, I've always been a very self-aware person. That probably stems from like insecurity purposes. I was always hyper aware of myself. And um, despite being hyper aware of myself, I was not very accountable, okay? And that's something that I kind of want to change about 2024 and that I think my entire generation, Gen Z, could really benefit from because despite being very aware of ourselves and other people, I feel like Gen Z, not very accountable or not at least like very honest about ourselves. I think this year I'm gonna make a lot of videos kind of exposing myself for the poser that I am or at least just for all my flaws. And I think that's something um, that I've actually been resonating with like other people's content is a fresh take, you know, something that is sometimes controversial. I've actually been indulging in a lot of controversial content that challenges kind of my preconceptions, my misconceptions, uh, believe it or not, okay? And I'm not saying I agree with everything I've seen thus far, but I have immersed myself in things like Ben Shapiro. Guilty. Sometimes he makes really good points. I'm not saying all of his points are great, but I've been indulging myself in material that I typically and traditionally wouldn't indulge myself in. Um, I think my favorite creators currently on YouTube is probably like Abba and Preach. Um, you just, they say everything that's like on my mind, just their thoughts, their opinions, their views resonate a lot with me, but I'm going on a tangent here. First and foremost, the first step to fixing a problem is acknowledging it. And so I am going to spill it all here and talk about the reasons why I'm the problem of like 95% of the problems I face in my everyday life. And I think that is a very important skill to have is to be able to recognize when you're the problem and when you're in control of the terrible things that happen to you. First point, I have like no friends. No friends that I consistently like engage with, I'd say on like a regular basis. No friends that I hang out with, no friends that I go to when I have issues these days. Um, and you know, like a point in my life, I definitely would blame that on other people. Like I'd be like, oh, I'm being discluded and like people are just being mean to me and like people are being petty to me. And I'm not saying that it didn't happen. Like people weren't not being petty. But I, I think now as I reflect, I'm starting to recognize that I definitely was a huge issue. Like I was very problematic. I'm still, I'm sure, very problematic. Why am I struggling with that word problematic? I'm problematic. I, um, I don't keep in contact with people. I reach out to people when I need help or when I need emotional support. And I'm not as readily available to them, perhaps when they need support or when they need someone to listen. And I take full responsibility for that. That is not the behavior of a good friend. That is a very one-sided kind of friendship. You know, at times at times I gave more and other people gave more and I gave less, yada yada. But I think that was something that I really griped with in my early 20s was that I always felt like people were doing it to me and people were being unkind to me or unfair to me. Uh, and I never really, you know, put two and two together. I mean, I was horrible at math all my life. I hate math. But Clearly I didn't put two and two together to recognize that I was a common denominator in all these situations. Like I was always a friend that wasn't invited to like a birthday party or like an event. And I'd be like, hmm, what was me? Like no one wants to hang out with me. I'm being excluded. But then I realized it's because I don't really talk to people often. Like the only people I engage with is like my immediate household. So like, or, or in the case of like when I wasn't living with my partner, I would talk to my partner daily. I would talk to my family, not really my friends. Um, so I get it. I get that's why I no longer really have friends. But uh, yeah, you know, just taking accountability for the part that I played into that. Oh. But I wish them the best. I do. It's just I, 
Another thing I have to recognize is just, I don't, I guess I don't have the drive or the energy to keep up with, you know, the things that my friends want to do. Like, I, uh, I'm not the type to exercise with other people. It's just not me. I can't stay focused. I don't like getting interrupted in my set. So that's, that's something that I wasn't willing to do with, like, my friend group, which, you know, to each their own, just wasn't something that I like to do. I don't really go out to eat, uh, because I'm cheap and I'm broke these days, but I mean, before that even, it's just, I, I didn't really want to go out to eat. So, I mean, like, it just felt like our, our hobbies, our interests, our habits didn't align, and that's totally okay. But yeah, I recognize that it isn't so much that people were excluding me, it's that I was kind of excluding myself. That is accountability. We're being accountable this year, we are recognizing our own faults. But part of recognizing your own faults is also recognizing what you do and don't want, you know, what you truly desire. Accountability is like being honest with yourself, you know? It's not just assigning the blame to yourself when you know it's merited. It's also recognizing, you know, the truth, being accountable for the truth. Because I was very much in denial about a lot of things like all my life. And the truth is, despite being a bubbly person for the most part, and despite being generally like, I guess a polite person or a nice person, I don't really like to talk to a lot of people. I really don't. I, I have like this much energy to invest in like friendships and relationships. And that's, that's a clear flaw of mine. Don't get me wrong. I think I just gravitate more towards the idea of friendship where it's like, you see each other now and again, you talk here and there, but you know, at this point in my life, I just don't have the time or the en energy or the desire. Let's be quite frank here. The desire to keep up with it. No shade to my friends or you know, the people that I was previously close to. It was just that I think we brought out the worst in one another and the best and the best. They brought out the best in me, but the worst in me as well. And now as I'm aging and I'm coming to terms with this, I'm recognizing that um, I almost feel at peace now in solitude, if that makes any sense. I feel at peace with being alone because there was, it's really hard for me these days, especially to juggle the dynamics of like other friend groups and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. There's where I'll be accountable. Uh, I pushed a lot of people away by just being distant. Um, and that's just not the way that they engage in friendships, which is totally okay. To me, I'm, I'm fine with just hearing from someone maybe like twice, three times a year and I'll be okay. It's because I don't speak the same friendship language as they do. But enough of that tangent. In 2024, I'm going to accept that I just don't really put in the energy for relationships and friendships like that. I, I invest a lot of time and energy in my romantic relationships because I'm sure it's got something to do with my borderline personality disorder and the fact that I make that person like my everything, like my, my person. Uh, so again, accountability, I recognize that as a pattern. It could be very detrimental because that can lead to things like isolating yourself from friends and family. But I think in my case currently, it's just because I just don't have the energy these days. You guys let me know if you think that's problematic, that I don't really have a ton of friends that I talk to regularly. Totally up for the dialogue, the discussion in the comment sections. I'd actually love to hear if you guys resonate with that idea or like that current situation I'm going through. Uh, you guys let me know though. So the next thing I think I want to work on in 2024 is recognizing when uh, I'm just being a shit human being. I think that's something I definitely don't recognize until like very much after the fact, like very long after the fact. I think calling myself out more regularly is probably a good thing. And I think I started to do that nearing the end of like 2023 was that I would definitely like apologize like pretty quickly after I recognized that I was the issue. Um, and I, I, again, I think that's something that I've had an issue with, that a lot of people have an issue with is not uh, fully accepting when they're, they're the issue or uh, at least apologizing for it, even if they did recognize it. They, they refuse to apologize for the part that they play. And um, I think this goes hand in hand with another goal of mine uh, that I hope to work on not letting my mental illnesses, you know, be like a crutch or be an excuse for why I treat people unfairly. So especially in my relationship with my partner, which is again, the relationship I probably have invested the most time in aside from obviously just raising my daughter. Um, but it is one of my interpersonal relationships where my BPD, my borderline personality disorder, definitely like manifests and shows a great deal. In the past, you know, I think I 
I said a lot of things that were like, uh, well, that's just how I process things. And I still do that. Don't get me wrong. I still do it. I'm not being hypocritical here. Like I'm acknowledging that I do it still, but I said things like, um, well, that's how I process things. And this is how, you know, my mind works. And I'm sorry that I do this, but it's because of this. And I'm not saying that that's not valid. Again, it's literally a disorder. It's not something that I can necessarily just snap my fingers and change. It can't even be medicated, like certain other types of disorders and mental health issues. You know, there's some mental health issues that could definitely be assisted with medication, um, but borderline personality disorder, unfortunately, is not one of them. It's typically treated through like talk therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, yada yada. Even despite having gone to therapy for like two years, I, of course I still have the patterns. I mean, it's something that's lifelong, can't be cured. Uh, but it's no excuse to treat people poorly. And that's something that I have emphasized, you know, uh, when I got my diagnosis, was that I was not going to allow my diagnosis to make it like other people's problem. Uh, and it's not, it's not anyone else's responsibility to, to make me feel better. It, it's not something that they should have to cater. And I know that, you know, it's in theory, it's easy to say, like, it's something that they shouldn't have to deal with or shouldn't be responsible for. But the reality is that you know, when you're in a relationship or you have family members, um, they, they kind of have to deal with your shit. They do, you know, or they don't. And that's the scary part. And that's a, a real big fear of mine and people with borderline personality disorder. I mean, it's literally one of the trademarks of people with BPD is that fear of abandonment, the fear that people are going to like run away from you or leave you, which also tied in with my first point, that constant hurt that I was experiencing when I was losing friends and friend groups. Um, but yeah, BPD, major fear is abandonment. <sighs> I think it's like a self-perpetuating problem. It's a self-fulfilling issue because people like myself will engage in behaviors that drive other people away, whether that's being, you know, quick to anger, quick to, you know, react to situations, to react in what other people deem inappropriately, or at least like an inappropriate level. Uh, like when I get angry, I get angry and it's quick and it's sudden sometimes and it's it's disruptive it's destructive and it's it's very toxic and i think that's why people like myself and not to generalize but people like myself get a bad rap for being a toxic person or manipulative with their emotions is because it's it's really hard to control those emotions sometimes and uh and it's okay to acknowledge that and it's okay that that's i mean that's just my reality i can't change that about myself that's literally how I was born. That was a consequence of the things that I went through as a child. But I can recognize it, and I can apologize for it, and I can work on being better. Because um, you could definitely, it's not a death sentence. It's not something that's terminal. BPD is definitely something that you can manage. And I think that's something that I need to be accountable for this year, is recognizing when, when I ha am having like an episode, or like a reactive episode, and trying to manage those emotions, those thoughts, those feelings a little better because I shouldn't be taking it out on anyone. Um, and it's no excuse. There comes a time where people are less understanding, you know, the more frequently things happen like that. Um, so yeah, that is the second thing I hope to work on this year is managing my emotions better, or at least, at the very freaking least, is letting the people in my life who have to deal with me, my diagnoses and my mental illnesses, Letting them know that, you know, it's it's something that I need to work on. It's not necessarily them, you know, that they, they are not responsible for the way that I react and how I behave. Accountability, accountability. And to those of you who have BPD or who have a loved one with BPD, it's tough. It's tough. I'm not taking away from that. And I'm not blaming anyone for not being more self-aware or not taking more accountability. I'm just saying on a personal note, um, is something I definitely have to work on um, if I want to improve the state of my interpersonal relationships. So that is another key part of being accountable. It's taken a lot to admit to this one. I don't know why this one in particular, because I feel like the other two were really big too. So, but anyhow, it is, um, I got to take accountability for the fact that, um, I'm not as accomplished in life as I hope to be because I am lazy. I'm really lazy. I'm super lazy. Like I'm so unmotivated and lazy that currently I have a master's degree, 
but I have been unemployed for months. And I could easily chalk that up to, you know, saying things like, oh, well, I was exploring creativity here and I was taking a break. But honestly, I think it's because I'm lazy. And, um, you know, people will see this and be like, what do you mean, Isla? You're not lazy. You got a master's degree. You studied. I feel like that was, like, simple. You know, like, I've always been pretty decent at school, which blew, blew my mind because, again, I, I always take the path of least resistance. Like, I will get something done, I'll get it done quick, I'm good at that. Like, if you give me a deadline and an objective and some basic instructions, I could do that. But when it comes to carving out, you know, my own path, or, like, delving into that new venture, like, I just... I get so unmotivated and so lazy so quickly, and it just sabotages all my attempts to be great. I feel like at this point in time, given the advantage that I've always had on like social media, I say always, I mean like the past seven or so years since I started appearing on Watch Cut, like I had a head start. I had the advantage that a lot of people didn't have. I had inorganic growth on social media because of that jump start that Watch Cut gave me, and I did nothing, absolutely nothing. By now, I could, I could have been something. I could have been like an Addison Ray. I could have been like a Charlie D'Amelio. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking too highly of myself. But had I been more proactive, had I been less lazy, I think I would have made something of myself by now. If you guys could see this room right now, and if you guys could just check out my channel, you would see that I changed my interests like that. So I might attribute that to BPD because they're like, well, that's like the impulsive part. You know, you're going through these episodes of impulsive actions. You change your mind frequently, you have a black and white sense of thinking. Again, not making excuses, trying to explain, but again, we're being accountable here. And the truth is, no, I don't think it's my mental illnesses necessarily. I think it's just I'm, I'm lazy. I could be more driven. I just choose not to. Um, yeah, like I've been looking at these job posts and not to get me wrong, okay, I am applying. It's just I am considered overqualified for like entry level positions because of the master's degree. But then underqualified for other positions because I don't have the years of experience. It's like, come on, like throw me a bone or something. Give me the entry level. I'll take it. Just consider me, like really consider me. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm in this weird limbo where no one wants me. I could try harder. I know that. I could be applying to like 30 jobs a day, but I'm not because I'm lazy. I'm pretty sure all those like self-help people would look at me and be like, see, that's a case study of someone who has the capabilities to be great or to do great things and they have the materials, the resources, the time, the energy to do so, but they're just not. I mean, look at me, I've been attending the gym, attending like it's Sunday school. I've been going to the gym semi-regularly for years now. My physique has not changed much. If anything, it's gone down. And it's because of that principle of like progressive overload. I'm not challenging myself properly. Or at least when I do challenge myself, I don't apply myself later on. So it's a colossal waste of time almost. <sighs> like that master's degree. If you guys want me to do a video separately on the master's degree experience, I will. But yeah, it's just, it's disheartening to see myself in this position. And like for a second there or a couple seconds here and there every month, I feel that way about myself. I'm like, look what you did. You're not accomplishing anything. You're pathetic. But I'm also like, no, no. You know, at least I'm not beyond help. It's not that I'm not educated. It's not that I have any sort of like learning disability, learning capability. I'm fully capable of doing great things. I am choosing not to foregoing greatness simply because I'm lazy. And that's the truth. I am privileged enough to be lazy. And I recognize that. And I wanna change that about myself because it's, it's wildly uncomfortable being unsure of what you're gonna do next. Very uncomfortable. I'm lazy. That's why this YouTube channel is such a mess. I haven't found my rhythm. I haven't found my passion. But I'm pretty sure this year I am going to be just talking to this camera about like the things that I think, the things that I feel a lot more frequently and sharing with you guys these thoughts. Maybe it'll be relatable. Maybe. You know, as, as we continue on into this video, I feel like I'm recognizing even more problematic patterns that I have that I haven't previously, like, I guess contemplated. It's actually getting harder. Like, I'm actually getting more progressively embarrassed by the things I'm about to say. And this is one of those things that I just thought of on the spot, okay? I recognize that the next thing I need to be accountable for 
is my internalized and externalized misogynistic views and behaviors that I have that stem from obviously um, insecurity. That's mouthful. Uh, in layman terms, that means that I am super jealous of other women and that has caused me to resent other women. That's very problematic. That's really problematic when you think about it. I mean, you don't even have to think that deep. You just gotta hear what I just said and recognize mm, that's no bueno. That's not a good thing. Uh, and what I mean by that, okay, I don't inherently just not like women. Okay, that's not the thing. I'm not saying that I am a pick me. Actually, I was gonna do a video about being a pick me, um, but that's neither here nor there. We are talking about my internalized misogynistic thought patterns that occur when I am insecure or jealous of other women. And I, I will say this, I don't think it's wrong to recognize that you are envious of other women. I think it's a very common phenomenon and more people should probably admit to it. Like, you know, you see those posts on Instagram where they're like, like this is a real body, like, these are stretch marks and it's not like face tuned and like, this is the real me, this is my real skin. It's almost like that. Like, that's what I'm trying to describe right now is that when people make posts like that, despite it being a great message, that is a wonderful message and it's very real. Um, and it's something that I think that we need to see. I think I've taken it a step further. Okay, so I'm not explaining this well. I'm editing this video. I'm not making any sense. But essentially what I'm saying is posts like that inherently compare women to one another. And the person posting like, this is a real body. This is my body. This is what a real woman looks like. Inherently, they're comparing themselves to the women who present themselves as quote unquote superior to the average normal woman by being flawless. That's kind of what I'm describing. And I will see like women on social media, I will see people like out and about in the real world. Uh, and they'll be engaging in behaviors that I myself engage in. Let's say just wearing, wearing something a little scandalous, showing a little cleavage, you know? And I'll be like, like deep down in my heart, in my gullet, my, like, my stomach. Like I can feel that weird tinge of like envy or jealousy and I'm like, why are you wearing that? And guess what? You know what? I can't even, it's so embarrassing. I can't even lie. Like part of me, like if I were to be out with like my boyfriend or something, I'd be like, oh my God, like they're wearing that. And like, don't they realize that there's like, that is so embarrassing when I say it out loud, but it's like so true. And I'm over here, I'm a former OnlyFans model. Ridiculous. That's like the most hypocritical thing I've ever admitted to. It gives me the ick. Like, I give myself the freaking ick. Because I'm like, I look at women this way on social media who are posting this stuff, and I'm like, ugh, that's just a thirst trap. Like, why are you posting that? For attention? And then I'm in the same one, like, just showing my ass. Like, <laughs> showing my ass at the gym, even though I worked arms, like, I am no better than these women that I am mentally criticizing. And I would never go out of my way to criticize a woman on like her social media and like comment some bullshit. I, I think that's weird behavior. There's like no excuse for that. I can console myself with the fact that I'm not out here judging these women like on their page and stuff like that. Like, thank God, like that's the bare minimum of human decency. But I'm still mentally judging people and I think that's wrong and I need to take accountability for that. Because listen to me. Okay, I'm an insecure gal. I'm gonna say that right here. Okay, we're gonna make that a public statement. Write this down. I'm an insecure gal with a lot of issues, including abandonment issues and an innate fear of being cheated on by Isla Dizon. Like, that, I think that's where that stems from, is that jealousy, is that fear of not being a good enough when you compare yourself to like other women and stuff like that. And I think that's so embarrassing to fess up to, but I also think just like those posts showing like stretch marks and jelly rolls and unfiltered faces, it's important. It's an important message because a lot of people don't feel comfortable admitting that they don't like other women. Okay, I won't go that far. That it's hard for other people to admit that they are like resentful of other women who they deem superior to them. And maybe if we think about it, maybe that's like a, that's an innate evolution thing. You know, like that is your competition. If we're thinking primitive, like your only objectives in life as a primitive being, and I'm saying we've evolved from that, I'm recognizing that, but from a primitive standpoint, 
other women are your competition to male companionship, male breeding. Ugh. Again, I recognize we've evolved. Women are the competition. And I think that's why pick me is the thing. It's because these people are, you know, a primitive in the mindset of like, women are my competition to male attention and male validation and male coitus. Um, God, it's, I'm a pick me. I'm just recognizing that. I'm a pick me. I'm ashamed of it. And I'm recognizing it. I think I'm a soft core pick me. I'm not a hardcore pick me who like puts other women down. It seems like it in this video, but I think I'm just, I'm just recognizing that thought pattern as being destructive. Ugh, God. The thought of me being this hateful, like I'm such a hater, is disturbing. It's true, I get jealous. And that's coming from an OF girl, a former OF girl, like that I'm criticizing other women for thirst traps. <laughs> the hypocrisy, the audacity. That's, that's a big one, that's embarrassing. I'm just gonna. If I thought I didn't have a lot of friends before, I feel like this one is gonna cost me a couple more. But it's all, it's all in the spirit of being honest and being accountable. Ooh. Oh, this one's hard. In 2024, I'm going to admit and recognize that I am perhaps not as liberal or progressive as I have fully believed myself to be for the past 25 years of my life. Maybe 24 years, considering that I've been having these thoughts the last year or so. What I mean by that is that I almost don't resonate with a lot of progressive, liberal, democratic ideologies that are currently surfacing, especially within like Gen Z. Again, I think I mentioned earlier in this video, I think I mentioned indulging in media that was outside of what you would consider liberal. Or I find myself, you know, seeing creators that, you know, I generally like. I do. Like, uh, Salem Tovar. Um, I just, I, I hate the way she says nowadays. It's nowadays, not nowadays. Anyways, tangent. Um, I'll see creators like that who I generally enjoy, and I still do. But, like, I have such different views than them now as i've aged as i've consumed more social media as i've seen more things as i am now a mother to like an eight-year-old there's a lot of things from the left side of the political spectrum that i no longer resonate with and this is less so an admission of something that i should be accountable for and more so an acknowledgement that i'm no longer what I previously thought as like a liberal. And perhaps that's because of the political s landscape. The political landscape is constantly changing, but now I feel like specifically the left side has become a little bit more, a little bit more radical in some views. And now that has created like a division. I'm not saying that I'm like conservative. I'm not. Um, and I'm not even saying that I'm like traditional either or right leaning yada yada. I, I think I'm saying that, you know, like I no longer subscribe to the idea of the bipartisan, you know, loyalty. I think, I mean, I, I don't know much about libertarians, but I feel like I'm leaning towards there. I'm very much a moderate politically and just culturally. I, I'm someone who goes to the gun range a couple times a year because I want to be comfortable using a firearm. I am someone who, uh, you know, believes everyone should be able to love who they love and marry who they love. But I have very distinct views on things like, I feel like it was a whole video waiting to happen. I have very different views on things like gender identity. And I think it's something that I'm not ashamed of. I think I'm more afraid of the reaction from people in my life who I genuinely love and care about. Seeing that as um, phobic of anything, you know. Uh, and that's never the intent. That's never the perception I want to portray to the people that I care about. I think it's just simply that I no longer consider myself as someone who subscribes to the constant progression in the liberal ideology. I think maybe perhaps I'm more of like a 90s, early 2000s Democrat or liberal. Uh, but modern day liberal ideology has gotten very, very, very extreme. And um, I think it's gotten to the point where it's like, if you don't fully 100% agree and you don't drink the Kool-Aid, you are now like a right wing. And I, I don't think that's fair to assume either, you know? Like there's many things in the right wing that I definitely don't agree with, like abortion bans. Like I don't agree with it. Would I ever get one myself? No, 
But that's, that's besides the point. So I think that's something I am acknowledging. Not something I'm taking accountability for. Maybe it doesn't belong in this video, but it was something that I just thought of like sharing with people because in this channel I feel like I'm going to be sharing some thoughts that might be seen as controversial from the political left side of the spectrum. Uh, and then some people might be, you know, comparing me with the likes of like Candace Owens, uh, Brett Cooper, labeling me as like a right wing, a red pill. I'm not. I don't even like the idea of adding a title to myself. I'm an individual with my own thoughts. But yeah, that's that's something I acknowledge within myself this year, is that I'm no longer the classical, or at least the neo-liberal. And I really hope for the, my friends who are very much left-leaning, progressive, liberals, Democrats, that they don't take any offense to this. I don't think of you any less because of your political views, and I really hope that you don't think of me any less. And it feels weird because, truth be told, I've judged people for their uh, voting voting habits in what year was it? 20, 2016? What year was Trump elected? Anyways, that. Apologies. I get it now. I think for time's sake, we are gonna call this the last one, the last thing that I want to acknowledge and be accountable for in 2024. Again, there's a lot of things I didn't list here, for sure. Um, but this is one that I think is really important, especially with my audience. I want them to recognize this as well. And that is that I am not as kind, as generous, as I think a lot of people have made me out to be, or that I have historically been in the past. I think at one point in time, I probably was a much more kind and generous person. Um, but I think given the way that life has played out, given that I've matured a bit and that I have learned what I now call it boundaries. I think I've definitely changed as I've aged. Uh, and I think that's really hard for some people to accept and recognize, is that I'm not as wholesome or as innocent as people perceived me to be at least years before. I think I consider myself as being genuinely like polite. I think I'm cordial. I think I can be nice to people. But I think that a lot of my views, my feelings, the things that I say, the criticisms I have, how I can be a hashtag hater indicates that I'm not as nice as people might perceive me to be. And I think that's something I acknowledge now. Really, in my elementary school yearbook, me and a buddy of mine, Hong, a childhood friend, me and a buddy of mine were literally voted the nicest people. And I think at a point in time, I was extremely nice because I was a freaking pushover. I would let people treat me in a way that I wasn't all right with simply because I wanted to be accepted, I wanted to be liked, I wanted to be, you know, in the crowd. And um, and I know this isn't an uncommon phenomenon. I mean, I'm sure there, there's literally a trend, like, what is it, like the villain era or something like that? I think I'm in my villain era, if we want to call it that. But I've developed boundaries. I have developed a backbone, finally. I must have been doing something right, you know, in taking enough calcium to develop a backbone. Because for the first 20-something years of my life, I, I had zero backbone. I did not stand up for myself. I didn't, you know, voice my opinion. Uh, and that has put me in some really terrible positions that I no longer want to subject myself to. But yeah, it's I need to recognize that I'm not as kind or nice or as forgiving. Actually, scratch that. I was never forgiving. I was a hater through and through, okay? I could hold grudges like a motherfucker. But I'm not as nice as I used to be. Uh, and I actually think that that's better, but I need to acknowledge that. And which is also something I recognize as being a reason why I think I lost a lot of favor in people. Uh, whether that's my audience who, I mean, at some point in time, I think I had like 100,000 followers on Instagram, if you want to measure that as being something important. Now I'm at like, what, 74,000 or something like that? Um, and it's because people started to recognize me. I'm not this little sweet girl, this little wholesome girl. I had an OnlyFans. I've said things that rub people the wrong way. I get catty, I get petty. I don't like hate comments. I will reply back in a mean way. I stay on my ground nowadays. Like, people don't want to acknowledge that even nice people have a breaking point. And I think my breaking point was like years back. I think that's something that prompted me to 
make such a change in my personality is that like I, I no longer want to accept that kind of treatment towards me. And so yeah, you know, 2024 though is the year that I will be leaning into that. I'm going to take accountability for the new persona that I embody. I'm going to fully embrace the part of me that well, I, at first glance might seem more problematic but I actually think is more authentic. I no longer have an interest in being what other people expect me to be. I think I want to share myself as I am, as genuinely as I can, on my channel, because, hell, I don't know, that's a lot, that's a lot better than being inauthentic. And I really hope that this video can shed some light to you guys on how human that I actually am. I'm not a character that you guys see on the internet. I am a genuine human with their own flaws, their own insecurities, their own hangups. And um, yeah, it, it would be really nice if you guys could join me on this journey in delving into topics that are really hard to talk about or exposing myself to the criticism of the internet. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, this reflection of 2023 me and 2024 me, who I hope to build, who I hope to explore a little bit more. And again, I hope you guys take this next year to be a bit more accountable. We can all do with a little bit more accountability and self-awareness. But until then, ciao.